name is Vipke Suttold. I'm coming from a small company called Cloud Broker, um, where I'm the CTO. Um, and I will tell you uh, more about the details uh, in the next uh, 15 to 20 minutes. Um, basically, there are two parts of this talk. One is I will uh, tell you um, a little bit about our company and what we are actually doing so that you understand the background. Um, and then the second part of the talk, I will show you uh, kind of an overview of different uh, application examples, which will focus on basically uh, high uh, performance computing applications in the cloud from various perspectives. Um, so there's just one slide about our company, just that you have a little bit of background. We are actually a spin-off of the ETH Zurich, um, uh, thanks to uh, Peter Kunz, who was, uh, as myself and somebody else, involved in the founding of the company. Um, and we exist since uh, about uh, five and a half years, located in Zurich. And uh, when you want to know more about us, you can look at our website. Um, but basically, what is the purpose of, of our existence? This was the time when cloud computing became really interesting. Uh, I can still remember uh, that I went to a talk there and was really fascinated by, by the uh, possibilities that were given um, by Amazon at that point when I was coming from the grid computing world. Um, and our idea is really to make it easy to access uh, applications from a, a scientific um, and technical uh, perspective uh, on cloud computing infrastructures. So basically, it's like HPC applications at your fingertips, what we want to reach. Um, and uh, I will tell you a little bit uh, about how we try to do this in the next few slides. Um, so basically, we, we offer kind of three different solutions. Um, one, and this is the one I will talk about most, that's the Cloud Broker Platform, which is basically a software as a service and platform as a service solution uh, for HPC applications on different cloud infrastructures. And then there is a more like shop interface to it, which is called App Center. I will talk a little bit about that. And then we also provide consulting uh, and support, which I will not talk about today. Um, so when you look at the typical cloud computing stack that you have uh, in high performance computing and that we actually saw in, in some of the previous talks, uh, you usually have kind of the typical uh, traditional, whoops, you can almost see it, um, uh, clusters, supercomputers, whatever, uh, at the bottom, then you can have infrastructure as a service on top, platform as a service, software as a service. And on top of that, you can even have more like um, domain specific gateways, for example, for specific scientific communities um, that, that want to um, run their applications, um, for example, behind a web gateway. And then the users can access this on all different levels, depending on what uh, they, they are provided with. And of course, also these services might use each other. So one might build on top of the other. So we are really interested in high performance computing applications. So we do not so worry so much about the infrastructure. We uh, can, there are not now a lot of both private as well as uh, public uh, cloud services that you can use. So what we really, really provide is kind of an automation um, layer on top of this, which really focuses on the application. Uh, one is the, uh, the platform, which is more like platform as a service, software as a service, and the app center is somewhere uh, uh, a little bit higher on top of this. Um, so, so basically, this is what, what we are doing. Um, I want to now go a little bit into detail um, on these two things, um, but uh, not go through all the fine print that was given there, just wonder when you re read later. Um, this is basically the structure of um, the Cloud Broker platform. So uh, it basically consists of three layers. One are the cloud computing infrastructures, and we support a number of them. Um, then on top of this is uh, what we developed, which is called the platform, uh, where you can uh, register applications, where you can just register clouds, and uh, users can use either their own ones or they can use uh, resources and software from others. They can charge each, each other, um, so also accounting is taken uh, care of. Um, and all of this is then exposed, both in a web interface, so you can use this from any browser, um, as well as also as a web service. So you can basically automatically, when you have registered an application there, uh, use it as, um, as a web service and directly talk to that application. And on top of this, there are various tools. For example, we have an open source uh, Java client uh, library and a command line interface. Um, we have the App Center that I'll talk about later, and there are also user tools that use this. Um, and so there are various ways how you can access this. Um, and I will show you some of them, um, how they um, actually work later. And the nice thing about this is that you can really 
like this way, not only use the infrastructure as a cloud when you have virtualization uh, layers, but you can really use applications as a service here. Um, what it does internally is really um, basically a little bit what uh, uh, Sergio just talked about. It will automatically create a cluster, basically on the fly, for you when you submit the, your work to it. You don't need to worry about this at all. Uh, it will actually automatically start and stop resources for you. Basically has a built-in queuing system which is particularly adapted for uh, cloud resources. Um, and uh, it will also take care, because there was this question about the data transfer, also the data transfer is automated. So the user basically just has to interact with the platform and the data are taken care of, the images are taken care of, which basically allows to, uh, users to interact with clouds without. Um, usually we recommend run times between minutes and weeks, kind of. Um, so we basically have seen um, all different sorts there. I wouldn't go to milliseconds. Uh, this is not what the platform is really meant for. Um, operating systems, we support both uh, Linux as well as Windows-based um, applications. And we also d support various uh, possibilities for uh, parallelization, uh, which when you once have registered it, please use, I don't know, uh, OpenMPI. It, the platform will take care of to start the application in the appropriate way. Um, and uh, you can also construct kind of workflows, simple ones inside the platform, and you have various combination possibilities when you use uh, the whole thing from the API. Um, these are some uh, examples for application software that we have ported, and also here you can either use what is existing there already or um, register your own and use uh, other people's software. Um, regarding the um, interfaces, as said, we have a web uh, interface, but we also provide a web service interface. Uh, which is REST-based. On top of this, there are clients in Java in the command line interface, uh, which you can actually uh, get from uh, GitHub as uh, open source. Then I talked a little bit about the App Center. This is quite a new development. Um, so uh, I can kind of pre-announce it here. It's not uh, fully publicly available yet, um, but just talk to us and then we'll make it possible. Um, so uh, what this is, is basically um, a little, like, even further going away from the infrastructure. Uh, it really is kind of like a shop where you can go and, I, uh, and say, as a normal user, uh, I want to run a certain application, and either it will provide a download for you, you have to install it first on your computer, or it, it will go to an external web service, or it will go to the platform and run it for you. And you will be really totally shielded from the infrastructure because this is uh, configured before by the corresponding software provider um, for you. So when you now want to use this, there are also different options actually for both um, products that I talked about. One is there is a public service. So when you go to platform.cloudbroker.com, you can register there and uh, use the, the platform. You can try it out if you want to. Um, there is a registration procedure you have to go through, but otherwise uh, you can basically register for free and then start using it. It has a freemium model, so basically the registration is for free. Um, and whatever is uh, available there has either a price or is also for free. So some open source applications are for free, but for example, Amazon cloud usage, of course, has some price attached to it. You can also have the same service as a hosted system that is particular for your organization, for example, and nobody else has access except of the people that work at your organization, or you can have it as licensed software. Um, and of course, you can have additional services if, if that's not sufficient. Um, when you are interested in more details, just come um, talk to to me or uh, come and talk to uh, also my um, business partner who, who can tell you the, the details of the pricing. Um, okay, so, so this gives a little bit of the overview of what we have on the technical and a little bit of the, on the business side. Um, so uh, I now wanna tell you a little bit on how you can really use this. Um, and I'll have kind of different views on how you can use the system. You can first of all use the cloud broker platform kind of directly. I want to run a certain type of application. Um, and this is what I first want to, want to talk about. And I have two examples here. Uh, one is actually from this local uh, institution um, where we collaborated with the Institute of Molecular Systems Biology, which is uh, located at Hungerberg, um, and uh, together with IBM. So we used IBM cloud resources for this. Um, what they do there is uh, they try to better understand the mechanism of infectious diseases. Uh, and for doing this, they want to look at the structures of uh, proteins that play a role there. Um, 
And uh, so basically what they do is they model these proteins from the 1D sequence that you usually get out of sequencing um, instruments uh, to 3D structures. And when you know that you have a, a, like a, a lot of genetic information, even in small bacteria, um, you know that, that this can be a lot of work. Um, so uh, the people there, they wanted to run this on the Brutus cluster actually, but they only had bought kind of a small segment out of it. And so they expected that this would take for some months. Um, and uh, however, it turned out to be a perfect case for cloud computing because it, these calculations, these are many calculations, but they're embarrassing parallel. Uh, so it's easy to distribute them. Um, and so we basically use the setup, basically the setup that you've seen before. You have the cloud resources uh, provided by IBM in this case on, on the bottom. Then you have uh, the automation system that we provide on the top. And then you have the actual users uh, sitting there. And so in the end, within less than two weeks, we were able to create 2.3 million um, 3D structures um, using about a quarter of a million CPU hours in, in that time. Actually, we could have used more, but we have kind of uh, limited this to use up a maximum of uh, 1,000 um, uh, CPUs at the same time. And not always the workload was very high because this, the jobs were actually submitted in batches. So the nice thing about this is basically so when you use a big cloud provider such as, um, uh, such as uh, IBM or Amazon, you can spill out a lot of calculations in a short amount of time. And after these two weeks, you know, you don't use the system again. You just uh, go and look at uh, which results you have achieved. So you can speed up things a lot here. Of course, this is a very nice case. It's embarrassing in parallel. And I want to give you also a little bit of an insight into a different case, um, which is coming from uh, computational fluid dynamics. So in this example, it's uh, um, coming from... Um, Biscari, a, a consulting company from Spain, who had uh, used this for a heat transfer case where you have cold air flowing like into a room. Um, and uh, they used the Elmer software. And it's, it turned out we were uh, using Amazon uh, resources for this, the HPC ones actually, that they provide. And it turned out, yes, up to a certain uh, uh, limit, um, in particular like intranode, this is quite nicely scalable. However, unfortunately, <laughs> Amazon does not really provide high-end supercomputing facilities as these would have been needed for going beyond. So we basically had the problem that were already asked before, you know, about the uh, internode connection, which what, what was not fast enough. However, there are other cloud resources now that could be used for this example, which provide better facilities here. Um, however, the people were very happy with basically having this all automated, being uh, able to use. Now I will go quickly through the other um, example, so you cannot only just plainly use the whole thing, but you can also stick this behind an interface because you get the applications as a web service. Um, so there have been, uh, for example, another fluid dynamics software called TransAT or TransAt from ASCOM, which is also located in Switzerland. Um, and together with the uh, Hochschule in Rapperswil, they created a web user interface for it based on Microsoft Silverlight. And you see a screenshot of this. You can get all the details from the thesis that resulted out of this. And another uh, completely unrelated example is uh, we have also been able to easily through the web interface been able to create a, a node for NIME. NIME is a, I think, pretty well-known workflow system, um, which is in particular uh, used, for example, in the um, like pharma chemistry uh, industry. Um, and it was pretty easy to run then uh, calculations uh, through that. And we have done this for an example of uh, computational chemistry workflow, as you can not see much, but you can see the workflow here. So, uh, and there are now more examples of, of interfaces that are being uh, built directly on top of the platform. So the people don't get the platform directly, but they basically, it's just used as a middleware and as a backend. Um, at the end of my talk, I also want to give you uh, another different view on the whole thing. Um, these were now kind of individual examples of individual cases, but this whole thing can also be used in larger setups. So I have two examples of large collaborations um, that use um, our tools. Um, one is the Cybers EU FP7 project, um, which has uh, 15 partners um, from a number of uh, different uh, European countries, as you can see here. You see it's mostly academic partners, because the goal of the project was, and is still for a few months, um, to build scientific gateways. So when you look at the stack, of the whole things that we uh, talked at, about at the beginning, 
um, scientific gateways are kind of closest to the user. So the user goes to a web interface and can run their particular uh, science there, usually for particular communities such as earthquakes or we have seen the iPortal in, in one slide which was also, uh, is also part of this. Um, and this has been done now, now for a number of different disciplines um, based on uh, a tool called WSP Great Geus, which is uh, used for the building the portals. And uh, we were responsible to uh, provide the back-end interface to cloud infrastructures. So when you look here, you see again the same kind of structure. You have the cloud computing infrastructures here. You have us as the middleware, which again now has two layers, because it, it is also built into a, uh, this interface which provides science gateways. Um, and then you see here, it's really a long number of, of different disciplines that have now access to the system. And here you can see on basically through this um, GUS interface, you can also use kind of classical grid and, and cluster systems uh, on, alongside the cloud systems here. <laughs> and finally, um, this is a project that has uh, started only last year. Um, this is called Cloud SME. And this has a little bit of a different direction. Um, it is not targeted towards so much academic user communities, but it's targeted to, towards um, small and medium um, enterprises, in particular in Europe. And the idea is to make it easier for uh, SMEs coming from scientific, uh, coming from um, engineering and manufacturing um, to allow them to use HPC um, types of calculations, in particular simulations. There are many small and medium companies that, that just cannot use them because they don't have their cluster in-house. And they often even don't really know how to use these systems. So the idea is to make it easy for these companies uh, to use these facilities and this way to help grow their system. Um, and uh, so what the project will do is it's currently developing a platform um, on top of different cloud infrastructures that will enable um, the usage of simulations for SMEs. And um, there, basically, our platform is in, in the center of, uh, of, the, of the whole uh, um, infrastructure. Uh, and we also use the app center to kind of give a shop to the outside because we're talking about SMEs here and they usually are used to you know, paying for these services. Um, so they can just go there and, and select the application they want to use and, and run it. Um, we have very interesting use cases there. Um, they reach from fluid dynamics uh, over aircraft maintenance, discrete event simulation, and there's one very interesting one in particular when you look at the currently running um, football uh, world championship because there's one company in there that actually calculates individual insoles uh, for, among many other things, um, football players' shoes. Uh, so they have many uh, well-known teams. This is a Spanish company, so you can imagine. Um, uh, they built the, the insoles for very famous uh, football players. So uh, when you look at the website, you can find the, the link um, on the Cloud SME one. It's, it's very interesting to see. Although it looks like in the last time they failed a little bit. Um, so uh, it's, it's an interesting thing because there is a computation part involved to create these insoles. And one would not imagine, just imagine, uh, you know, there are so many companies that do so many different various things you would never think about that would need computation. So I think this is a very cool example. Um, another interesting thing about the project is that it really includes the whole stack. So we have everybody from a, from a cloud uh, provider uh, like um, Cloud Sigma. Um, then uh, various different kind of cloud middleware providers, uh, including us. Uh, and then we have the software providers for the software that is actually used um, for uh, engineering, manufacturing calculations. And then we have some real like manufacturing companies there that do something or consulting companies that actually help uh, um, uh, manufacturers to, to use these kinds of calculations. So it's a very interesting project. Here you see an overview of the technical infrastructure. Basically, the view is always the same. Um, the, no, none of these users, as you can imagine, want to deal directly with some, some infrastructure as a service cloud. So we basically give them a whole uh, platform on top of it uh, to, uh, to use this and to make it easier for them to abstract it from them. Uh, but I won't have the time here to, to go into uh, any of the details of this. Just a little bit of advertisement. If you're interested in joining this, or if you know some SME that might be interesting to join, there's currently an open call running, uh, which would provide you money for being able to use this uh, infrastructure. So uh, when you're interested or know somebody interested, um, just go on the website and you will find this. This is running only until the 25th of June, so you would have to hurry. 
but I just wanted to place it here. So I see I'm over time, and um, actually I'm also finished. So many thanks to the EU for funding of these projects that I've introduced at the end. Many thanks for our team um, and um, all of our collaborators. And finally, thank you very much for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions.